On to the Buffalo Bills needs now, because I see a lot, a, a couple of people previous in the comment section had sort of mentioned it. When I was going through and I was looking at the Buffalo Bills roster, uh, sort of a power back, however you want to sort of phrase that, a different type of running back was a need, no longer a need. The Bills can still add there, but no longer a need. The Buffalo Bills needed to add more depth at wide receiver. I think a lot more people, a lot of people would like to see an alpha in the room and Trent Shurfield is certainly not an alpha. So wide receiver could definitely still be a need. Tight end. I think a lot of fans probably do not see tight end as a need, but uh, I know and you know, and we've, we've been hearing some things, the Bills are sniffing around some of the tight ends in this draft. Guys like Luke Schoenmacher, guys like Zach Koontz, et cetera. Mm. Off as a tackle. To me, we're going to talk about this. I think it's one of the biggest needs. I really do think that a guy like Dewan Jones or Darnell Wright could be brought in, Anton Harrison, to compete with Spencer Brown. We could obviously use more depth on the interior of the offensive line. And then we get to the sort of the thing that people don't want to talk about so much, and that is adding to the defense, especially with draft picks. And notably the front, the, Senate, yeah. seven, front seven, right? I mean, that's brutal. Yeah. Brutal. We need a pass rusher until Von Miller gets back. We need some guys on the interior. We need a linebacker. And I guess you could probably throw safety depth in there as well, because if Christian Benford and Cam Lewis are corners, it leaves just maybe DeMar Hamlin and Zane Anderson at safety. So the Bills have a number of needs still. Now, a lot mm. of people are like, well, it's the whole team. Every team has these holes. You could pick apart every single team. Like we're picking apart and dissecting the Buffalo Bills. And you could probably point to seven, eight positions where they could get better. That's what we're doing because we're Bills fans. If I really picked apart the Bengals roster, I could find probably just as many holes. If I picked apart the Chiefs roster, I could find just as many holes. So I wouldn't overreact to there being such a big number of finger quotes needs for the Buffalo Bills. Not all of these needs are going to be met. Some of them will be over the course of the coming month or two. What sticks out to you right now is the biggest, like the biggest couple of needs, the ones you'd like to see addressed with like high draft capital or if the Buffalo Bills can find the money, another name free agent. Well, look, I don't know if the value is going to line up for where the Bills are drafting in the first or second round for mm -hmm. putting draft capital into this position. But uh, to me, middle linebacker, especially where um, Brandon Bean came out and pretty much put an mm -hmm. end to our dreams of positionless uh, linebackers yeah. for the uh, for the Bills, like Matt Milano not playing mm -hmm. uh, middle linebacker for this team. Now, that doesn't mean... I mean, look, we know what Tyrell Dotson is on defense. He's had defensive snaps. We don't necessarily know what Balon Specter is on defense, but I don't really want to go into the season with that big of a question mark. And Terrell Bernard certainly doesn't look like he has the size to play mm -hmm. middle linebacker and wouldn't really peg him for that. So to me, middle linebacker stares out as a uh, stands out as a pretty big need yep. for especially as important as that position is to this Bills defense. And as much as they relied on Tremaine Edmonds when he manned that post for the bills the last five years that that stands out to me uh, as probably maybe the number one need. Um, I go back and forth on the number two need, man, because part of me thinks like, okay, we need someone to come in and play right tackle and, and take mm -hmm. that job potentially from Spencer Brown. But then part of me is like, we really need a pass rusher. Like we really do need someone to hold down that fort for one while Von Miller's out and it it's not going to be AJ Epinesa and Boogie Basham. Like I just don't mm -hmm. feel that confidence right now to say that it's going to be one of those guys. I'm fine with Gregory Rousseau and where he is in his development and how yeah. he's come along, but I'm not expecting Gregory Rousseau to be that 10 sack guy, edge rusher and type guy. I expect him to chip mm -hmm. in with some sacks and be that long lengthy guy who can bat passes down, be good against the run that complete defensive end. We really are lacking pass rush pop right now. Um, so you could you could make the case that a pass rusher might be a, a really big need. And then I'd probably kind of go with number three. It, it's maybe a toss up between, you know, right tackle competition for Spencer Brown and and, and another receiver. So yeah. uh, like more of an alpha type receiver. So to me, that's kind of where I land. And then honorable mention mm -hmm. um, interior offensive yeah. line depth kind of comes in as an honorable mention for me. I'll tell you, like, I, I go back and forth all the time too, because like the fan in me is like, go out and get another alpha wide receiver, like go out and get Josh Allen, that other just absolute dog in the wide receiver room. But then sort of the more level headed, maybe like analyst in me is kind of like, all right, chill, like take a deep breath, <laughs> <laughs> go get a right tackle, sure up the middle of the offensive line in case guys get hurt and then focus on that front seven, add 
add, add pass rushers, add defensive tackles, add linebackers. Like that's clearly just create a more balanced team. And I'm like, no, no score. Be the most explosive offense in the league. Like, so it's sort of like the devil and the angel on my shoulder right now, sort of as a as a fan trying to balance what I need. And and you're right, it's a it's a difficult decision. It's going to be interesting to see which route Brandon Bean goes because at this point he can't do both, right? Like, if he uses a first, second, or a third round pick on a receiver, he's probably taking away anyone for the like. If he uses a first round pick on a receiver. He's taking away anyone's ability to, to challenge Spencer Brown at right tackle. Correct. Like, yeah. I, I don't know at this point, if you're signing out on the street, maybe Cam Fleming, like I don't think there's a lot of guys on the street that are going to come in and challenge Spencer Brown. If he drafts an edge rusher in the first round, again, sayonara, Spencer Brown is your right tackle. I don't like, you're going to get a good receiver in the second round. I don't know if you're going to get like an alpha dog. That's going to come in and challenge Gabe Davis for boundary receiver two like in the second round, like a Zay Flowers or a Jackson Smith and Jigba would. And in Jigba, he wouldn't be so much a boundary guy as he would be a slot guy. But, you know, to my point, and, you know, it's it's just, it's very difficult. And it's going to be really interesting to see where Brandon Bean goes from here. Well, and look, mock drafts are what they are, right? Everything mm-hmm. never, like when you're picking 27, 28, like it's yeah. so hard to predict really what's going to be there at that spot. And it's not like we're picking eighth or ninth where you're going to have a really good idea of three or four guys that are going to be available. Mm-hmm. We don't know what the run on tackles might look like in this draft in the, in the mid twenties. We don't know if a Darnell Wright or an Anton Harrison, if someone like that is going to be available to the bills. So I think again, to what Brandon Bean really tries to do, like mm-hmm. put himself in a position where he's not pigeonholed into one position, see where the ball board falls. Maybe on his short list, he's got wide receiver tackle mm-hmm. and, and linebacker, and he's just going to see how the board falls and take the best, uh, mm-hmm. best of the bunch. We, we we don't know, but you you make some good points because if they do pass on a tackle in the first round, like it's pretty much Spencer Brown, and mm-hmm. we don't have a guy like a Questenberry that we've signed, <laughs> like we did last year, that could potentially like who is that guy right now on, on the roster that is going to split reps with Spencer Brown at right tackle come camp. Do we have that guy? Is it Tom? Oh, Lewis? we, we Tom don't, Lewis? we don't have a guy to split reps with Spencer Brown, but if you're talking like we're playing in a game, like if we were playing in a game tomorrow and Deion Dawkins or uh, Spencer Brown got hurt, it would probably be Alec Anderson. Yeah. And that is, that's my point, right? Like <laughs> you need to add, yeah. you need to add here. Right. And mm-hmm. so it does creep its way up the priority list. I've seen a bunch of people in the comment section saying tackles a need. A, a couple, a lot of people still leaving edge rusher. Maybe interior defensive lines a sneaky need as well, where we maybe mm-hmm. don't go first round, but maybe a day two pick on interior yeah. defensive line, which has seemed to be popular mm-hmm. with uh with mock drafts right now as well. <laughs> 